I might not even need this light. All right, y'all, so that wrapped up day two and the Bassmaster opens. It's kicking off on Toho, travel partner pro Jason Castile. I don't, we're doing this pretty redneck, y'all. We got a little yeah, iPhone light. Redneck. I'll tell you what, so he's leave, well, was leading up today and he's fixing to win this thing tomorrow, aren't you? Taking it to the house, baby. So he's sitting in second place, going into the final day. And then my buddy Eric, legend of Willie Swamp, y'all know, he's fixing, well, he's fishing the co-angler side. Jason, of course, on the pro side. Here we go. So hopefully Eric can go out there and do his thing as well. We're hoping for wins from both of these guys. Jason represent the pro side, and Eric represent the co. That was it for me, finished 22nd. Was able to bring home a little bit of dough. So I was excited about that. Little rug rat. Yeah. Cheers Appreciate to the it, house, baby. That's it. Cheers up. Classic bound, classic bound. So a huge congrats to Jay. We're hoping and rooting for him hardcore tomorrow. There's a huge, huge local hammer, not to mention, but a huge, huge community here in our hometown, Winter Garden, Florida, that's gonna be rooting for him. And uh, not to mention the way in tomorrow is the local Orlando Bass Pro Shops. Um, this video is gonna be uploaded after that way in but we're gonna get out there and take care of them. I'm gonna do a little finish up that kind of wraps up the whole experience for this Bassmaster Opens for 2020. Then we'll move on. We've got, what, Cherokee Lake? Yeah, next is Cherokee, next. and then we go to Lake Oneida in New York, and uh, uh, Syracuse, Har and then on we go to Harper. Har well, I think it's September, end of September, like the 23rd through 25th. Yes, sir. Just wanna thank Lakeside Bait and Tackle. Huey Magoo's, best chicken tenders you ever put in your mouth. Can't you tell? <laughs> Fish gel fishing, get you some of that Versa fluorocarbon. Can't go wrong. Also, gotta thank my, uh, Power Pole. I gotta thank Mercury. That bird sitting right there, old Phoenix. She's done her job every day. Got me back and forth 100%. Atlas, TNH Marine, and the good Lord. That's Without right. him, Nothing's, Nothing's worse. Nothing. You can have all this fancy stuff, Absolutely. but it don't do. It don't do anything without Everything him. Everything is possible. All things are possible with God. Just remember that. Yes, sir. We're going classic bound, bringing it home. So, Jason, gonna win this thing tomorrow, fishing the rest of these events in the Southern Opens this year. We'll give him a classic berth. Tons of exciting stuff, y'all. So we are gonna check out, finish up. And then tomorrow we're gonna go to the launch and this will be a whole nother video so make sure you check out the channel and, and check out Championship Friday, day three. We're gonna go to the launch, cover that for a little bit then come back to the house, knock out some chores and pack up. That way we can hit the road right from Bass Pro Shops on the final way in once we get that all finished off tomorrow. So super exciting, fun day. I had a blast. Um, proud that my buddies are gonna be able to be out there on the top 12. That's awesome. I really, literally wouldn't have it any other way. And uh, to be able to cash my first bass check, it, it feels real good, man. And honest to God, is like Jason said, without God, this is this stuff's crazy, man. Everybody gets pretty emotional, but it, it is dreams come true out here. So until next next video, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and we'll catch y'all right back here on the Bass All Your Channel. All right, y'all. So that kind of wrapped up day two. It was an absolute crazy day, to say the least. I know I kind of lacked like fishing, like on the water fishing action with the chest cam. There was really going into day two, there's really just so many unknowns. When I'm with like just out of the top 20 going into day two, I was really just focused on fishing. And there's a lot of unknowns. I was really just kind of bringing in the experience, if that makes sense. I wasn't trying to go out there and worry about cameras, worry about GoPro. I was fishing with a gentleman named Brian Adam on day two. We went out boat number 181, and we actually do back at five. So we took off about 7.45 that morning. And we weren't due back till five. That was the longest day of fishing I've had for a tournament. And to be quite honest, if you guys have fished these events, I like fishing that late a lot better. It gives you a whole lot of more time. So like by the time 12, one o'clock comes around, you still have four hours to pick the lake apart, depending by your location on the lake. But so it was pretty, uh, pretty exciting to be able to fish that long. Now with day two, Eric and Jason's check-ins were two hours before mine. So I was on bass, tra bass track at like 4.45 on our way in checking out where they were in the standings. And I saw Jason leading the entire event with like 30 pounds. So I was like, okay, that's pretty sweet. He's pretty much gonna be fishing on the third day. And I saw Eric sitting in third on the co-angler side with around 18 pounds. So I thought, wow, you know, that's pretty cool. Can't wait to get back with those guys. And as I was watching Bass Track and keeping up with that, I noticed the weights were super low for day two. And I had about nine pounds on day two as well. So I figured, wow, I might have a pretty good shot at going into day three, which would have been really cool. 
So I was watching, I was sitting in 12th for probably 20 anglers that weighed in, and then I got bumped. And then after that, I was just getting bumped back and back and back. I dropped from 13th to 21st, and then the last two guys, I got pushed back to 22nd, which was my final resting place, finishing in the event. So how it works is, it's a three-day event, and all the, you're guaranteed to fish two days, and you have to be in the top 12 to qualify for day three. So with that being said, I was really stoked for Eric and Jason. That was awesome to have the two best buddies there on the trail, watching them going in and fishing the third day. And then, like I said before, I was just really soaking in the experience. I wasn't worried about videotaping the weigh-ins. Um, I was so late. The weigh-in was done by six o'clock. I was the, I think the seventh or eighth wave. Talking to people and again, bringing in the experience, wasn't worried about camera work. So what you just saw was us back at Jason's house um, preparing for him going into day three, um, fishing that event. Now I went, the morning is pretty cool, a lot of media stuff going on in the mornings, checking out the top 12s. So obviously there's 12 pros, 12 co-anglers, as I said before, the field gets cut from 225 to 12 going on to day three. And again, the co-anglers have a three fish limit, the pros have a five fish limit. So the co-side is super competitive, which is nice. So our day was pretty slow, Brian and I, we really picked apart as much offshore grass as we could and as much shallow grass as we could find that wasn't completely tore through. It was kind of funny when we would find Kissimmee grass mixed with lily pads, we would get bit. I, actually, I didn't throw the fluke at all that morning. He was getting bites on a speedworm morning, so I went to a goat baits. This is a homemade lure company, hand poured stuff out of Ocoee, Florida by a gentleman named Randy Marion. But he's got this worm here. Now it looks like just a normal six inch standard, you know, finesse worm, but it's not as fat as a magnum trick worm, but it's not as skinny as a magnum or as a normal trick worm. So it's kind of in between. So it's beefy, six inch worm. It's got a lot of mass to it and it's got a flat size. So that's how I got most of my bites that day. But I was also able to cull a couple fish, throw in that bitters 10 inch worm in Christmas, which is again a June bug red. So I caught a lot of fish, probably caught 20 fish that week throwing this worm. My biggest bite that day came flipping this guy right here. This is a gambler burner crawl in black and blue. And I only caught one fish doing that, but I pegged that on a one ounce weight and flipped, again, matted reeds. I, I think if, if I was in the front of the boat, the two biggest fish I caught in the whole week were in matted reeds. So I think if I was in the boat, that's probably what I would have focused on, running weed lines, finding that type of matted vegetation. Um, just happened to be the guys I was with didn't focus on that stuff too much, but those were the biggest bites that I got. And that was later in the day. Of, that was almost four o'clock the afternoon on the second day I caught that fish. I was fortunate enough that I didn't break any fish off, but I did round out two swim jigs and a swim bait hook on God knows how big the fish were. So straightening out two swim jigs and that swim bait hook hurt, but you know, it happened. So again, I do apologize for not getting any chest cam footage, but in the end, I don't like covering a ton of tournament footage, especially one of that caliber. It costs a lot to get down there and there's so much preparation. Um, I just haven't gotten into the cycle of videotaping while fishing those tournaments and uh again just just really trying to fish my best on day two trying to get into the third day super happy with the finish um so that is my highest finish in these tournaments yet so i was proud of that hopefully we can take that momentum snowball effect it going into cherokee lake in tennessee i've never fished that lake i've only ever caught one smallmouth my entire life and it was like a 12 incher so hopefully we can get up there and catch a couple footballs of those brown guys. Hope you guys liked this episode. Day three comes out tomorrow. Now that's filled with weigh-in footage and interview style stuff with Eric and Jason. Uh, Gerald Swindle was there. Scott Martin fished the final event. Um, so that was pretty cool. And again, that was at Bass Pro. So I did videotape quite a bit of the weigh-in style for tomorrow's video there of day three. So be sure. If you haven't already, subscribe, hit the thumbs up on this video, and stick around for more awesome coverage of the Bass Opens. Day three tomorrow, Saturday, I'll go over this bag, which I think is a stout bag for co-anglers. Even if you're not fishing Bassmaster Opens, you're just fishing any style tournaments, or you're beating a bank, and you're a just bank fisherman, urban ponds, whatever. This bag is legit. Fits a ton of stuff. Saturday, I'll release that, and then Sunday, I'm gonna go over how much it costs in the finance portion of this tournament. Be sure to stick around to the channel for that. More videos coming your way, and next week starts some sweet fishing action. So we took this week of no fishing, more talking one-on-one -on -one with the camera. Next week is gonna be probably every day of nothing but bass fishing videos that we've got recorded. Trevor and I fishing a couple tournaments, so some legit stuff coming your way. Again, hit that subscribe. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Appreciate the support and the views. Till next time, get out there, stay safe, wear your life jackets, break that PB, 
We'll see you guys right back here on the Bass Audio Channel. See you later, y'all.